So to finish the triangle choke, what I need is my right thigh here, cutting across the, the front of his neck, or at least in front of the artery here. If it's all the way on the side, uh, I won't get the, the choke twist. And hip, so I have to hold his head. Now when I put my foot in the hip, he can't free his head. I can move my hips out to the side and get my angle. So now my right thigh sitting in front of his neck, I can actually apply the, the choke. Uh, really common mistake, I think one of the most common mistakes when people try to get their angle, they put the foot on the hip, they move their hips out to the side, but they push the head with them as well. So they go like that, okay? And now I've lost him from actually being a, a choke. I don't push his head at all with this leg when I move out to the side. I actually drop this knee down and get on my right hip. I need to keep Kata in space, the same spot, but I'll move my hip out to the side. And then I can start to get a good lock. We'll get everyone to go for this. So finishing mechanics of the triangle, I reckon I did this wrong most of my Jiu Jitsu career. Uh, like I knew how to do a triangle, but it wasn't a good triangle uh, like, I, like I do now, okay? And even though it's not even my favorite technique, but I'll find my, this way a lot. And I think most people uh, don't do this. So, so let's go through it. Um, first of all, I need to have both of my shins facing exactly the same direction. Okay, let's have a look at this gap. This is the gap I want to uh, choke with. Does everyone want to go over there just so you can see the, the gap? Oh, yeah, Scott, you can go there as well. Uh, so this is the gap I'm trying to choke with. So I turn my shins so they both face the same direction like this. That way it's a push with my right hamstring and a curl with my left hip flexor like this. So we're really trying to close that gap as much as we can this way. Not a squeeze with a, if, if you're kind of like this, you're more like squeezing your knees together like a, a duck doing it. It's not as strong as actually like doing this, okay. So we're scissoring that way. Maximum tension with that. Then I want to lock uh, with this part of my calf here on top of my ankle not right in the ankle because okay. look at the difference okay if i go a lot of people go here and this is how it's usually taught you catch it with your knee in your ankle and i'll curl down as much as i can like yeah that can choke for sure but there's still a gap yeah it's not fully tight and you can see so my shins are not facing the same direction when i do this and i'm locked off right at the knee i want my left calf to help lever my right shin back as well. So right now it's actually just my, like that helps a little bit, but it doesn't curl down too much. So I'm actually gonna catch just a little lower on the, a little more on the calf rather than the middle of the knee. Like this, put both shin, like catch it, both the knees go closer together and the feet, shins as close together, like in the same plane as possible. And when I curl from here, I can completely shut off the, the space, okay? So when I barricade, First of all, so he's hitting his arm like we just did. Uh, we change our legs, get underneath, open the space. So I'm going to hip out and get my angle. So I need to get that good angle first. My left knee is pushing his shoulder, his neck into my right leg. Okay. So this one does a good job of that. We're doing this, not very strong. I need to actually curl my, so both shins are facing the same direction. You should be able to choke them just with the push and the pull. Without even locking the triangle, you should be able to choke, okay? You shouldn't have to put your arms in to finish the triangle choke. In actual training, when they're resisting, you, you might need it, but, because um, they can get little gaps and, and so on, but when you're practicing it, we want to be able to choke with this first. Okay, now, I'll just go a little lighter on that so I can show the rest. I'm gonna lock mid calf, or not mid, upper calf, and now I put my knees back together and turn, so I kind of like turn my knees, cross my feet a little bit, like a little more like this, and then I go back like that when I want to lock it off, okay? Then the curl, let's go like 20% pressure, and that'll pull us the, the tap, okay? Obviously, if I want, I'll do it, he'll tap very fast, but a full curl will, will choke <laughs> very quick, okay? Don't need the arm across, although that's been a, you know, it's worse for him if we're, if we're like this, but we do need this push-pull, okay? And the best way I can explain it is using my hands to, to reinforce like that, okay? Um, get that first, lock with that tension, 
mid calf, not at the ankle. Look at that. When I go to the ankle, he gets much more breathing breathing room. Okay, both shins facing the almost the same direction, curling in. Okay, let's have a go. Three, two, one. Um, someone with broad shoulders. Um, you have to change the angle. Like you, that's where the angle is really important. So long people tend to do triangles easier because they can lock it off like over the back here. You know, they can do the exact same thing here. This is like a big gap, especially if Richard's like, you know, pulling his shoulder back and making it like, like there's no way I'm going to lock here. Okay, so what I need to do, I basically, the, the shorter my legs are or the larger they, their shoulders are, the more I have to work my hips out and lock off just the arm and the head. So I want to pull his arm up to like here and go around this, like that, okay? It's a much shorter space than, than all the way around here. So we can be here, put my foot on the hip, I hip out, I might keep my legs pinched, foot on the ground, hip to make itself moving towards the, the elbow. You still can't free the elbow, yeah? Okay? I've gotta keep that tension. I can't do this lazily, okay? I can't do this opening my leg out. I have to have my, my knee being tight against the arm, and I can move all the way here. So you see, this is the angle people talk about. I'm at 90 degrees to reach. And now it's a much shorter space. I can apply that pressure and get the tap. If we add that same mechanic, it's gonna be very tight. Okay. All right, just try it for another two minutes and then we'll do some training. Okay, three, two, one. But what, so when I'm getting my angle, uh, my aim is to get this thigh like tight against like I want to be like tight with this, okay? So this foot actually will poke up in the, the air a bit. If I'm curling down and I change, it doesn't get as, like it almost prevents my, the curl prevents my thigh pushing as hard into the, to the, um, the neck as I want. So I actually want it like open and pushing, yeah? Do you feel the difference, Kato? Like if I'm curled and I push, like that'll be annoying, but not as much as if I actually open it and and push. So when we're getting our angle, we, we keep this off the, we're not curling the whole time, okay? We get our angle, we push pull like this, and then the curl comes after. Okay, since obviously we're not putting a lot of downward pressure, we need some control of the posture. Cool. All right guys, let's do some training.